Hello, everybody. Welcome to episode 307 of the Hoopercast. So we're doing something a little different lately. Um, we've tried to give you uh, content at a more digestible rate. So um, you're going to notice that the length of the coming episodes is a little bit shorter. Um, so we're going to try this out, see how it works for us. Uh, but for now, just uh, don't freak out. This is the whole file. You're getting all the content I meant to give you at the time I meant to give it to you. Uh, but this is episode 307. Uh, Dustin and I are talking about the new Netflix film, uh, Fatherhood, starring Kevin Hart. And uh, we will probably try to release the next episode uh, we won't make you wait a whole week, uh, for these. We'll try to give them to you maybe twice a week or so, um, along with, a, a different bonus episode at the end of the week for film news. So we're trying to give you more at a smaller rate. If that makes sense, more stuff, but shorter stuff. So maybe just as much stuff, but differently. Um, so we hope it, we, we hope you'll like it. We think it'll be better and make for a better show. So enjoy episode 307 of the Hoopercast. Hey, Dustin. Hey, Hooper. How's it going? It's good. You having a good evening? So far, so good. Yeah. Better now, though, right? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, it's, it's much better. Yeah. You've been yeah. thinking a lot about um, fatherhood? Sure. Yeah. But not 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 in the way that you're you're expecting. Yeah. I'm talking about that movie. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Mr. Logan, Madeline doesn't have a mother to model after. I am well aware of what my daughter doesn't have. You think you can do this, but you can't. No, man, you're right. I can't do it. But you know what? I'm going to do it because I'm a father. God, Maddie. You Thank God today I got there in time to hold her hand. With Liz, so I didn't get to hold her hand. She was gone. So that's a bit from the trailer of tonight's film fatherhood mm -hmm. uh well, this movie was getting a lot of buzz on uh around social media i guess and uh, uh i was sort of on the fence about seeing it and then i was just like oh, okay well i'll check it out um so so this movie uh is a netflix film this is directed by paul whites um okay. Kevin Hart is the star. He's also one of the producers on here, along with um, Marty Bowen, David Bobear, and Peter Kiernan. Uh, the screenplay is by Paul Weitz and Dana Stevens, um, who also did the story. And it is based on a book called Two Kisses for Maddie, a memoir of loss and love by Matthew Loglin, who is the main character here. Mm -hmm. um, so we've got this cast. Uh, we've got Kevin Hart, Alfre Woodard, uh, Lil Rel Howery, uh, I was a tongue twister. That guy's name, Lil Ralph. Right. Uh, 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 <laughs> Dewanda Wise, Anthony Kerrigan, Frankie R. Faison, and Paul Reiser. Uh, continue his strange, uh, recurring relationship with Netflix. Right. Um. All right. So this movie is about um Kevin Hart plays a father who suddenly loses his wife and is thrown into single fatherhood head first and. Um, there's a lot of um, obstacles for him to overcome. He relied heavily on his wife um, and whether or not he can sort of pull it off and do it the right way and, um, um, and you know, reach catharsis or whatever. So, um, so this dropped over Father's Day weekend on Netflix and um, um, I gave it three stars. Okay. Okay. So uh, it's fine. Um, it is the latest version of a familiar story. You know, we've got a, a character who's thrown into a situation they're not ready for. Um, and along the way they get better at it. They face adversity. Uh, they get discouraged. They, uh, get a pep talk, get some support, strengthen their resolve and recommit themselves to their given task. Uh, the thing that kept this film from being better for me, was the end of the second act, the low point, mm -hmm. you know, structurally that's, you know, uh, 
you know, two thirds of the way through the movie, you've got a character at their lowest, how they're going to get back up and, mm-hmm. um, f- you know, finish the movie on top basically. Yeah. Um, we got there in a very contrived and preventable ways in this movie. Sure. Um, we stayed there for equally silly reasons. Uh, and then we're expected to care when he emerges from it. Um, so that part of it was kind of like empty for me. I will say though, that what works in this movie are the performances. We've got Mm -hmm. a good cast here of people. Um, and particularly Kevin Hart gives a really sincere and grounded performance. Um, he's not sad all the time and he's not really ever launching into his bits as you might expect from him. Um, anytime he's especially comedic, it's within the context of him just being, um, you know, joking around with his daughter or just being over it in general. Um, but it's always pretty well grounded, I'd say within the narrative. Um, sure. but there, you know, there's no silliness. Alfred Woodard is of course great. Um, as his, uh, his mother-in-law, um, his daughter played by Melody Hurd is good. Uh, his, uh, eventual love interest, Dewanda Wise is great and, and, um, and sweet. Um, and I think most people looking for a heartfelt, watch are going to enjoy the movie. They're going to get what they want out of it uh, as it's going to provide them with familiar structure with a safe ending. Uh, But more discerning viewers uh, may have some problems with it. So those are, those are my organized thoughts um, around this movie. Uh, It's interesting because this was supposed to come out April 3rd, 2020. Mm -hmm. So of course it got pushed. Um, um, Actually, sorry, it didn't get pushed because of the pandemic. It just got pushed in general. Um, it really on January 6th, 2020, uh, it was delayed to January 8th, 2021. So this is all from Wikipedia later that year was pushed back a week to January 15th, 2021 on March 30th, 2020. It was brought forward to October 23rd, 2020 due to Mm. the COVID-19 pandemic. I don't know why it brings it forward. Yeah. (laughs) Uh, April 4th. Sorry, April 24th, 2020. It was delayed to April 2nd, 2021. Um, okay. And then on November 19th, 2020, it was delayed again to April 16th, 2021. Okay. Then it was announced that Netflix would just go ahead and acquire the rights to the worldwide distribution. It says, mm-hmm. except for in China um, okay. from Sony Pictures and set it for streaming June 18th, which is where it now uh, rests. So uh, this thing here says the film was the most watched item on the service in its first weekend. A week after its release, Netflix reported the film was on track to be watched by 61 million households through its first month of release. Wow. So a lot of people have seen this movie. Um, Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I I guess um, this is movies like this are tough to always talk about. It's a three star middle of the road for me. And it's tricky to, try to critique a film that is just okay. Sure. Um, I already went over what I thought could have been better uh, about this movie, but, um, but it's interesting because this could be the first in the line of movies for Kevin Hart, where he's showing himself more as a dramatic performer, mm-hmm. kind of like, like a Jim Carrey or a Robin Williams, you know? Sure. So it shouldn't be, dis- this film shouldn't be discounted as that pattern continues to grow. Um, I have a complicated relationship with Kevin Hart as evidence through this show, but I've always mm-hmm. respected him um, yeah. as a smart, um, as a smart person in show business. And recently as a man of character um, in just his personal, uh, his personal dealings um, um, and other uh, professional things. So I don't know. Um, I know you haven't seen the film. Yeah, I have not. H- have I, does that sound like a balanced way that I've put- Yes, I think so. So um my wife and I sat down to watch it. We got, you know, a few minutes in. We hadn't seen the trailers mm-hmm. or anything. It was yeah. literally just like, oh, I hear about this movie called Fatherhood. With Kevin Hart. And and everyone's seeing it, so let's watch it. Right. And uh we got, you know, a cup literally like a couple minutes in realized what was happening and then we were both like <laughs> oh mm, yeah no let's let's hold off we'll watch this one in a year or so sure <laughs> um so so we we decided to turn it off um i i enjoy kevin hart just in general yeah um so i do want to see the film and i will see it um it's just going to be some time until i do um when i guess it doesn't hit quite so close to home and um 
And yeah, I mean, look, I mean, th- there's a long history of comedians taking more dramatic roles and and roles that that are like, you know, saccharine and sweet. And, you know, they want you to like it's we're going to pull at your heart strings, but we're also going to make you laugh. Right. Like Patch Adams. You mentioned Robin Williams. Yeah. It's like it's like in the vein of that or or um, or whatever. And so so the fact that Kevin Hart made this makes complete career sense. Um and yeah, I mean, the fact that it's being viewed as much as it is on Netflix also makes sense because it's a new film that is uh, on Netflix and you are probably already paying for it. So it's like, what new can we watch? Right. This is a small time investment. It's a small um, uh, ask in in terms of Netflix. Um, and, and look, I mean a lot has been said about Netflix and their quality. Um, but anytime you get something that's even slightly well reviewed, um, or even just gets like, it's fine. People tend to gravitate towards it on Netflix simply because it's there. Um, you know, I'm thinking about like bird box, right? Like the bird box was this weird thing that, that it had come out in theaters. (laughs) Nobody would have seen. Um, I haven't thought of a bird box since the day after it came out. (laughs) I know. Right. I know. But like, but I feel like fatherhood is, is in that same vein because this is a movie that people don't really go see in theaters much anymore. Right. And, and you can point to, um, what was that film that Kevin Hart did a few years ago? The upside with Brian Cranston. Yes. Um, it, another example of like, you know, him taking maybe a more heartfelt comedy role, but, but it didn't, as far as I remember, it didn't do super well at the box office because people just don't tend to flock to the theaters to see that. And I think in a, in a post COVID world, um, it remains to be seen whether people are going to flock more to the movies just to have something to do yeah. or less because, you know, whatever. So, uh, so yeah, I mean, it, everything about this tracks and makes complete sense. Your analysis of it makes complete sense. And, um, and, and in terms of it being that type of movie, that is generally how these types of movies go. They, they get you to a place that's a little bit contrived because it has to, and that's the formula. And then it wiggles its way out of it in the easiest way possible. Yeah. And I think that, um, I think you're, there's definitely something to what you're saying about, um, we we talked about middle budget movies before and how yeah. streaming has sort of transformed how those can get made and released with more frequency. And so yeah. there's a part of me that's just like, it's just another generic Netflix film, but then it's like, well, it's a middle budget movie. Like these are just sort of solid and inoffensive, yeah. you know, galvanizing, bring people together around a common theme. Like we want children to grow up happy. You know, I think this movie is going to give people what they're looking for. Um, Mm -hmm. there was an article I saw, um, it was too complicated to try and break down without just reading the entire thing verbatim. So I'll, I'll put in the show notes. Um, but it's, uh, it was about 12, this person asked like 12 industry insiders, like to rank the, the, the streaming services and they all kind of gave different answers, different reasons, but the consensus around Netflix was sort of like, it's definitely the biggest one. It's it's definitely one that people try to get in on, but there's a lack yeah. of respect towards it from yeah. in the industry because the 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 sentiment is that oh well they'll put anything on they'll yeah. they'll make anything, and yeah. so there's it's almost like because there's no um, standard of quality with Netflix, you might get great stuff on Netflix, but you might just get terrible or just okay things you have to wade through the the garbage and yeah. and this this is how it was if you remember at the end of blockbuster mm-hmm. um i remember going into blockbuster and there'd be like the new release section and and i don't know some people listening to this may be too young and they don't understand what i'm saying but there was literally <laughs> like a, a, an aisle that was new release items mm-hmm. and and you'd go through there and you know they're a couple weeks old three four maybe a month and then they get moved to the 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 regular shelves but i remember going through those new releases and it's like okay yeah you know the standard big hollywood movies but then you start having like the asylum version of transformers and like you know like transmorphers or whatever it was called and like (laughs) things like that and it's like it's like okay look you have so much shelf space yeah um don't put that here Right. Like there's a million other movies you could put in this in this building. And and I feel like Netflix has this problem where they're like infinite shelf space. Yeah. Put anything on here. Yeah. And because because the thought is like, hey, if we just have if we can just say we have 
100 million titles, then suddenly they can say, you know, we have 100 million titles. Mm -hmm. Come join us. And so as they work their way to... Three billion titles. It's like, yeah, but they're all going to be garbage and you have to go through all the crap to find the ones that are good. Whereas something like, I know I've been a shill for HBO Max since the beginning, but HBO Max seems to have good quality programming. It has the best catalog. It has the best catalog. Insiders agreed. There's a a status and a prestige that comes with trying to get a a show made for HBO Max, but even, yeah. even Prime and Hulu, same thing. Disney yes. Plus gets a lot of credit for, for putting, for actually putting the, the capital in to make good shows. Yeah, for sure. And, and Netflix, like they're, they're so, it seems to me that they're so hungry for, uh, for content, mm-hmm. which, which honestly, I mean, look, it's employing a lot of people and, and you can't knock the fact that there are people working in the film industry that wouldn't be otherwise. Yeah. Um, and yeah. that's great. They're, they're able to make a living. However, um, when there's no barometer of, uh, of, of quality, then it becomes difficult to find the good stuff. And, uh, and that's why you end up with something like last week we reviewed I Am Mother, which we both thought was a pretty decent movie. And there's a caveat to that. It's pretty decent for Netflix, mm-hmm. right? Like you can't help yourself but say that. And uh, we looked at Concrete Cowboy. It's pretty decent for Netflix. And 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 it is. Um, and it's weird because you almost expect if it's on if it's a film on Netflix exclusively it to just be eh. At best. Right. So anyway, I mean, any, any time you get something that's above that, I do feel like it try, it, it'll at least catch on a little bit as long as it's broad enough. Concrete Cowboy, I Am Mother, they're not broad enough. Right. They're not going, they're not going to catch on. But Fatherhood, sure. I can see that. Yep. That is it for now. Hope you enjoyed episode 307 of the show. Uh, stay tuned in a day or so. I'll have another one up for you. We'll talk the next film. Cheers. Cheers.